my gorgeous humans. I'm Leonie Dawson and I'm going to be sharing with you today how I creatively plan million dollar years and the three tools I use to do that. Now, if you don't know me, hi, it's so nice to meet you. I am an award-winning entrepreneur. I've created over $12 million in 10 hours a week. I'm an internationally best-selling author with planners used by 450,000 people worldwide. I've taught about 10,000 students how to write books, create e-courses, make more money and all kinds of other things. And I live in the Gubby Gubby country uh, on the Sunshine Coast in Australia. So let's dive right in. Uh, three tools to help you plan a million dollar year. Now, it has been the big thing for me that's changed my life and changed a lot of my clients' lives as well is looking at the statistics of how to be a high achiever, a high performer. And the statistics show that 80% of people don't even think about goals. 16% of people think about goals, but then like don't write them down. Just 3% write down their goals, but then they just never look at them again. And only 1% write their goals down and regularly review them. And those are the people that are among the highest achievers in the world in all kinds of categories, not just in work and career, but in their relationships as well. So realizing this, you, you realize like you have to know where you want to go in order to succeed and in order to plan and create a life and a business, if you have one, that you absolutely adore and helps you to thrive even more. So with that in mind, my number one tool, the one that I cannot live without is my own yearly goals workbook. I created these back in like 2009. I was pregnant with my first daughter and I knew looking ahead that the year was going to be kind of challenging. Like who does it when they're going to be a mum for the first time, right? And um, I knew that in order to get through it and in order to be able to grow, continue to grow my business um, as I became a mum, I needed to kind of have something to hold on to when things got difficult. And I really wanted to be able to set my goals for the upcoming year. And when I looked around on the market for something to help me do that, there was nothing out there. It was all very black and white and minimalist and masculine and very like career and money orientated. And I love careers and I love money, but I also love creativity and setting goals for my my soul and my self-care and my family and adventures and travel and all that kind of stuff. And so from there, that beautiful maiden self of mine thought, oh, you know what, I'll just make one for myself. I'll make it and it'll be rainbow and unicorns and it'll cover every single area of my life. And I took three days over Christmas while I was pregnant to create it. And um, then I thought, oh, this is really creative. Maybe I should, like, it's just adorable. Maybe I should just, like, pop it up online and see if anybody else wants to do their goals with me. And I thought it'd be cool if, like, 10 people did <laughs> their goals with me. Um, and instead, it kind of just went like wildfire. And that year, a thousand people ended up buying it. And, um, it's kept on growing and growing and growing over the years into something that's just massive. So now almost half a million people have used my goal getter workbooks to help them plan out a scrumptious life and a scrumptious business. Um, and it's just been the most incredible thing. But first and foremost, it's been incredible for me to even just use my own products. So the thing that I found and the thing that, you know, my people find is that once you use them once, they make such a massive difference that you end up using them every single year after that. And then you want to give them to your friends as well so they can set their beautiful goals and you can work together to create something amazing. So it's had lots of beautiful redesigns over the years. This is what some of the pages look like in 2014. Um, they've continued to like develop into even more artsiness. <laughs> 
if you will. It's definitely not a minimalist style, but I really, really, really wanted to get in deep into like lots of different areas of our lives and in our businesses to make we sure we had really solid plans and goals um, and do it in a really joyful way so it didn't feel like a sucky thing to do. So here's some more recent images from one of my fans, Erin Duncan Creative, who used the workbooks. They were just such stunning pictures and it really just helps you really see just how much color and love is in there. And also, like I really break down business and marketing concepts to be super simple so that you can do marketing plans, you can do HR plans, you can do systems analysis, um, you can do like profit analysis and finance plans and all that kind of stuff that ordinarily sounds it's very, very scary, but it's totally doable when it's in just a bright, colorful, simple format. So it helps you set your goals for your life and business for the year ahead. And it's just incredible the results people get. So I highly, highly, highly recommend you try them out if you haven't already. And I wanted to share you as well, like, because this is now, oh, what, 13 years in? <laughs> Here are my workbooks for my life, for my business, all the things that I've dreamt up and created uh, for my life and for my business. They have been absolutely massive, massive years and I'm so grateful to them. Now, some other tools that really help me to have, you know, really successful, abundant years, but also to feel wildly creative as well is doing my own form of like a messy, magical, I don't even know if I like to call it a bullet journal per se, because it's so much more than that. I like there's this kind of like history of the commonplace book, which is a place where you can journal and draw and you know, paste in things and collage and um, really make it a place that you can share all parts of your life. And that's where I ended up in this. So I've made my big goals for the year and on a daily basis, I'm using this kind of format. And, you know, I thought about like, I tried to do it be all like Pinterest cute in the beginning. And I'll show you like a picture of my, you know, days when I tried to make a beautiful bujo. Um, but no, no more. Um, for me, I do a very Leone simplified version. No index, no monthly log, no prettiness, no wankery because I don't want to get my head stuck up my own perfectionist butthole. So I just do basic bitch bujo, you know, and I carry it with me everywhere. It sits beside me as I work. I take photos of my to-do list. I'll send it to my accountability coach. It's in my satchel. It's in the car. It is constant. So this is how it looks when I was trying way too hard to make things beautiful. And this is what they kind of look like when they're like in how, when I actually use them. So I usually use like a Moleskin classic hardcover expanded version. It's got like 400 pages in it. Um, and I love that level of thickness. Here's my current beauty. Ho, 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 with a rainbow bright sticker on it. <laughs> And this ends up becoming like a place where I'm journaling, I'm scrapbooking, I'm putting all the stuff in it. And I use the front part of the book for that. And then at the back, I draw out my week um, and, uh, you know, I really block out morning, afternoon and evening and kind of like a vertical layout style. I highlight it if I'm feeling priorities and my prior, my um yeah, like whatever helps me get clarity for the week ahead. This is if I'm trying to be super posh, but it's usually does not look anything like that. And then I do a task list as well. One page for business stuff, one page for life stuff. And um, I like to include, you know, a section on different things I'm working on. So like there'll be a live section. Um, I was moving at the time when I had was doing this to-do list. So I had a moving area. I also have a daily habit tracker as well. And I really make sure that I break it down into the smallest sections for momentums to help me reach those big goals that I've set in my goal getter books, you know. And one handy hint as well, I like to use boxes to color in when complete instead of ticks because I find that it's much, much easier to see the level of progress I am at. Um, it's easier on the eye than being able to look at what's ticked and what's not. 
And this is my habit tracker. It includes work stuff and um, like health stuff, parenting stuff, just all the things that I need to do on a daily basis is totally okay if I don't, don't do them all. I also don't include Saturday or Sunday on there because <laughs> I don't have enough executive function to pull that off, my love. <laughs> um. And I just wanted to show you this part as well is if I don't manage to like get those things done, I will arrow a box to move it onto the next week's list, color it in if I've actually done it, or I'll put a cross to it if I just think, nah, I'm actually just not going to do that. <laughs> All right. And the last thing I do, the tools to help me achieve million dollar years is to use angelic digital support. Um, in all the ways to help me um, feel like I've got stuff sorted. So we use Asana in my business for me to assign tasks to my online business manager. And we also make sure that we keep like a standard operating procedures in there of the different tasks that we need to do with checklist, checklist, checklist of all the things that need to be completed because we are going to forget stuff um, because we're human and because we've got ADHD. <laughs> Uh, I also use Google Calendar and you might wonder, oh, Leonie, why do you use a printed, like, you know, draw out a calendar as well as having Google Calendar? Um, I find it helps me to visualize better and remember things when I've actually drawn it out as well. And then I really appreciate just the, the digital calendar kind of informs me to draw it out every single week. So I don't add things directly into my book. It goes into my Google Calendar first. And then at the start of each week, I will draw out my calendar for the week ahead um, and also recognize where I've overpacked things, where I might need to move things around. Uh, and that is just enormously helpful. Last of all, I really love um, using digital assistance in the term in in terms of like Alexa I don't want to say the name too loudly in case she hears me and starts talking or Google Home <laughs> I don't want that one to hear me either because it'll pipe up and then they'll start talking to each other but I set alarms for so many things I'll even set alarms for when I put the washing on um, just to remind me to go change it over so that I don't you know go back three days later and discover that the the washing hasn't been moved over, moved over onto the drying line. <laughs> it's happened to all of us. So those are the tasks. The, the printed book I use to um, design out my year. And then I use my basic, messy, magical bujo and angelic digital support to help me achieve those goals. Now, I really want to like remind you that like just experiment and see what works for you, for your life, your brain, your sanity and your productivity, because it's totally different for all of us. If you haven't used like, a, if you haven't done like a yearly goal setting workbook before, I highly recommend that experience to see if it does work for you, because chances are it does. And to remember, most of all, the tools actually don't matter in this situation as much as we all love tools as planner whores. The thing that matters is you do. And if you are needing a reminder, and if in case you're looking for a sign, yes, you should go make that thing. Stop scrolling and just go do and make some magical stuff. The world is waiting for you. All this planning stuff is really just to help and support you. Take that richness and that beauty and the miracles that are waiting inside you and bring it out into the world. I'm sending you so much love and I can't wait to see what you create next. <laughs>